Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this video is a healing analysis video on O9S, and while it is a uh, analysis video, it, it's also going to uh, kind of teach you how to make a spreadsheet for your team, like the one I have here. I'm just going to go into the basics on what you really need to make a spreadsheet. I mean, it might sound simple on like me telling you, but you'd be surprised how many requests I get just to uh, either give people my spreadsheet or teach them how to make their own. So first, we're gonna get into the spreadsheet. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to Google Sheets and you're gonna to wanna to find the fight you're looking for on like uh, the internet, just type in uh, the timeline for the fight or go to your FF logs, preferably your FF logs as uh, DPS can sway the uh, kill time quite a bit. So here, once you have Google Sheets open and you have your timeline, your FF logs, what you're going to do is you're going to want to make a time column, a uh, ability column, uh, the warrior CDs, paladin CDs, DPS mitigation, healing stuff, and damage amounts. You don't really have to do main tank or position, but that's just what we do so it's more coordinated. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to map out the fight, just what the boss does. So we have Latitude, Longitude at 10 seconds, Tsunami at 24 seconds, Umber Smash at 33. We just go down the list and write it out. Next column we have is the main tank, uh, who's tanking at the time, the warrior tanks until Tank Buster, he swaps to Paladin. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next, uh, next column is Position where the boss is positioned so we have slight north south mid north next column is the warrior cds next column is the paladin cds next column is dps mitigation which is faint tributor min apoc at all and next column is uh, the healing stuff so we have basically all our healing mapped out here and then the final column is the damage amounts and this tab is very important uh, i have the fight basically mapped out right here so we, we know that Tsunami, we know that the elements do 40k damage. And we know that Stray Flames does 15k, which is the uh, the fire AoE during the uh, transition phase in the orb. Knock does 30k, that's the stack marker. Umber Smash does 60 to 90k, depending on where you're standing. Knockdown does 33k. Orb Shadow is the, uh, the tethers, they do 80k unmitigated. Chaotic Dispersion does 140k unmitigated. Soul of Chaos is 40k. And after we have, so these are all the uh, these are all the abilities. And after we have this mapped out, we also have the heals. So we know that Earthly Star does 20k to 36k depending on if it crits or not. Indom does 15k to 24k if it crits or not. Whispering Dawn does 2k a tick for 14k total. And that doesn't include crits because crits are a little unreliable because each tick can crit. So it's, it's harder to find the total. So we just have the total, un, un, total non-crit ratio here. Uh, collected does 4.5k a tick to 33k total. If you extend it with Celestial Opposition, it becomes 36k total. And Fey Union is 8k a tick. So after you have your your... You spreadsheet ready, you have the timeline, you have the warrior, paladin, DPS, healing. We can actually start getting into the video. So if we pull up the video here, we see that we start pre-pull. And there's some stuff that goes pre-pull. Mainly for 09S specifically, we have the uh, Astra do a largesse, nocturnal aspected Helios. This puts a shield on us. And this will last till the first element. We also have Min and Conva on the warrior, and he's in defiance for the extra shield boost for the auto attacks. Here we do regular opener. Rin will place his star around four seconds, so it happens after or till, so it pops after the uh, first element, which in this case will be tsunami first. So we just slide cast out of that, do regular opener stuff. So here we have reprisal on the tsunami to lessen the damage and so a star tops us off completely. 
So here we take around 22k from the uh, tsunami. That's combined with the knocked shield, so that sounds about right. Uh, star will pop and we'll be topped. But before we get to the Umber Smash, let's rewind a little bit because there's a few things going on here. So if we rewind here, you can see that I do a place cancel of sorts with my fairy. Basically what this does is it will cancel the current action your fairy is doing and you can queue up and embrace right after. And using this place cancel technique, you can proc veil whenever you want it for the most part. It's very reliable and I suggest that if you don't know this technique already, you should probably learn it because it's very invaluable. All right, here we have veil. We have a buffed shake, we have passage, and then we have a collective. This mitigates Umber Smash pretty heavily, in t so, but the, the main reason for mitigating it this much is so that the collective ticks, as you can see, will top us up before the next AoE, which is at 113, a full 30 seconds away. So you can see here we're at 40k, 45k. 50k were topped off with one regen tick to spare. Some of the DPS aren't topped yet, but that's okay. They don't really need to be full. It's mainly for the healers, for the incoming uh, healer AoE mechanic. So here, we, had, we just had Umber Smash at 33 seconds. So basically what your mindset is going to be is you're going to see that. You're going to be like, okay, Umber Smash is at 33 seconds. When is the next set of AoE damage? So we go down the timeline and we see that Tsunami is at 113. So that gives us around 40 seconds of uh, 40 seconds to heal back up so that we can live. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your tools and we can see that we either have, we don't, we don't have star. Star is crossed off. It's on cooldown from the tsunami. We have endom and we have collective. What can we use here to optimally maximize our DPS so we, that we don't waste uh, resources? Well, the good thing about Collective is that it actually acts as a mitigation tool as well. So here, if we mitigate the Umber Smash, not only is it, or if we collected the Umber Smash, not only is it mitigating the damage, but it's also topping us back up for a Tsunami. So that's why we do, that's our mindset of sorts. Uh, here we have the Warrior Home Gang. Need a tank swap. Warrior gets an ED here. This puts him around half HP. Fairy does a little healing to him. Here we have Reprisal. That's the only thing we use for the second Tsunami. We'll drop to around 20k HP, give or take. So here, if we look at the next set of damage, we have Knockdown times two. Okay, how much damage does Knockdown do? Does 33k around there. We have Tsunami, that's about 25k, puts us, or puts us down to 20k, and then we have another AoE that does 33k afterwards. How can we top up so that we don't waste any resources? Well, if we look at Tsunami, Star should have been down at around uh, 4 seconds. So that means it should be back up for the knockdown. And as you see, Star will pop, and it will put us at around... 44k 40k around there depending on if just damage or healing variance to five percent so knockdown happens i drop to 16k because i have energy drain helps heal let me go back and watch that real quick to see if we have a prize long we don't okay So here, Paladin has Sentinel and Rampart on, and we Fey Union the Paladin, and Warrior has Vengeance. There's a different strat you can do. You can hollow the orbs here. However, it doesn't really save us anything, so I don't, we didn't really see a point in doing that. Uh, Paladin also gets APOC here. Takes around 30k. So it's not too big a deal. Here. If we look at the knockdown damage, you can see we're quite low. If we look at the knockdown damage, and then we look at the next set of AoE, we see it's at Earthquake at 204. 
Uh, the problem here is that we actually have no tools we can use. We don't have Earthly Star because we used it for the knockdown. We don't have Indom. We don't have a Collective because we used it for Lumber Smash. So that basically forces me to use the one and only Indom in the fight here. Uh, there's a strat you could do where you have the DPS Bloodbath and Second Wind, and you have uh, the Fairy Solo target the healers and tanks to top them back up however that's going to take some trial and error and we didn't really have time for that so moving on we have the first earthquake and all we have on this is reprisal and collective again the collective acts as a mitigation of sorts and it also it tops us off it tops the healers and tanks up without any needed outside sources so collective will go off here Everyone will drop to around half K or half half their HP pool. Rin will extend this collective. So as you can see, we're getting ticked for about 4k still, which is about actually the average. It looks like it's not affected by the earthquake itself. We also Fey Union the, the main tank here to help top uh, uh top the tank off before the earthquake debuff expires. Uh without Fey Union, I'm pretty sure. It's impossible for him to get top back up. We also have a backup just in case. We have this star. The star tops up the DPS for the second earthquake. However, it also acts as a safety mechanism so that we can, in case like a healer is uh, a tick short or a few HP short, that it'll top us off before the, uh, the debuff expires. In here, I'm getting rid of my stacks to dissipate. We're going to do a large S dissipate deploy off the main tank here. Main tank has Min, Conva, and Veil up. We're going to ultra mitigate this next earthquake. So we have Shake on it. We have a buff Shake. Where is it? We have a buff Shake. We have Reprisal. We have Passage. We have Conva, Veil, Min, Deploy, or Dissipate, Deploy. And basically what this does is this ultra mitigates it so that even if it's not a crit add low, it'll still hit for zero damage. We're looking for that consistency. So we have Veil, Reprisal, Passage, Shake, Deploy. Deploy goes off, Passage goes off. Was, in this video, it was a crit, but like I said, uh, the strat we do makes it so that it's as consistent as possible and it hits for zero every time, even without that crit. And what happens when the earthquake hits for zero? The debuff just falls off. In case the warrior gets auto attacked here, because it's a crit add low, he doesn't lose his shields. Sometimes if it's not a crit, he'll get autoed and he'll lose HP. But uh, Rin has an ED on backup here, just in case that happens. So that's uh, another... Fail safe. And here it's just burst damage. The star will do some healing for the warrior. Warrior also pops Rampart here to mitigate some of the autos and makes it so that even without the fairy, the loss of embrace isn't really felt. Warrior shouldn't need any extra heals here. Oh, I missed one thing. Back at the first earthquake, we also have Troubadour. I forgot to mention that. So we have Troubadour and Reprisal for the first earthquake, plus Collective. So here is where we use our GCDs for the fight. Because there's downtime, using GCDs is a must, right? There's no reason you should, be, you should not be doing healing GCDs during downtime because it just there's no point in not. You don't lose DPS doing it. So here, what we do is we have Ren do a largest sucker, or sorry, largest aspected Helios, and we have myself do an ET sucker. This pretty much tops us off for the entropy or the entropy damage from the fire. Uh, largest knock shields is enough to do it itself, but because I have a free GCD, there's no point in just not playing it safe just in case someone gets a low roll. Debuff expires. Ren's going to place his star here, and he's also going to do a collective. This collective is going to help tick us up for the uh, ultimate he does after the orb. 
Star's gonna pop. So we're around half HP right now for the DPS. I do a Sucker and he does a Helios. After the ultimate, I do an ET Sucker and he does a Helios again. We summon the Fairy. So now we're getting towards the end of the fight. The end of, the, the end of this fight is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. There's not much damage going out in Blaze. We still have some collective ticks just in case the Warrior drops from this next auto. Warrior pops his cooldowns here. Paladin pops Veil, but since we don't really need it, we're not going to pop it. Because Blaze just does so little damage. Warrior shakes here. Reprisal. Like I said, no reason to pop the Veil. Uh, right here, I give the the uh, main tank a Fey Union, which is the warrior at the time. Warrior can drop pretty low here, uh, so it's safe to just Fey Union him, because at our kill time, the Paladin doesn't really drop too low after the uh, tank buster. Usually, I would Fey Union him after the second place, but because we kill it so fast in this video, there's really no point, and I dissipate there, so it's just... There's just no point. Dodging. Rin plays the star down. The star is going to pop after the second blaze. Oh no, the star is going to pop before the second blaze. And then our warrior is going to tank buster, or home gain this tank buster. Star explodes, we're topped off. Who gets an ED? Blaze happens, Ren collectives. He collectives right before the blaze so that we get the mitigation from it. This puts us at around 22k HP. So if we look at how much knock does, it does around 30k. So collective alone right here is just gonna top us off in time. So boom, we're already above the HP threshold, the safety net. Paladin has Bulwark, he has awareness up here, he pops Sentinel in a bit. He had a rampart up. And right here it's just it's just a straight burn. If you're not killing this fast, I would probably recommend saving Fate Union for this part after the blaze, because look, he gets kind of low still. But uh like I said, because we kill it where before damage even matters, there's really no point. So that's that. That's the end of the basic analysis of the video. But before we end the video, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna kinda give you insight on how we, how our brains work for this. So if we look at, like I used the tsunami analogy already, like we go to the tsunami, it does around 40K, star tops us before the next set of damage, which is 60 to 90K. All right, collective will top us before tsunami. You're basically looking at the main damage. Where is most of the damage coming from? Okay, we have Umber Smash. How can we top us up before Tsunami? We look at our tools and we say, okay, we have Collective. Collective won't be back up until 2.30ish. Oh, sorry, it won't be back up to around two minutes, which is the first earthquake. So we have to keep in mind, okay, is there any damage between 30 seconds and two minutes that collective would save more on. No, doesn't look like it. So we're gonna be like, if you look at this, like, damn, Blaze, okay. When is the next set of AOE damage? Oh, it's at 547, that's almost 50 seconds later. Okay, we can just star, easy. No waste of, no waste of resources. What else can I talk about? Uh, we can talk about how we use our mitigation tools. Ideally, you wanna get more uses or you want to get more uses of a skill, but you also want to get value. More uses doesn't always equal value. So an example would be the last passage we do is at 249, and that's because anything after this is just, by the time it comes back up, it comes back up at around 449, which is the first blaze. There's really nothing to use it on. Nothing, it, nothing it's used on will make a difference. 
And we see here we have Veil before Tsunami. We do that. So it's back up for the second earthquake. But so that it's popped for the Ember Smash. Passage at 33 seconds. Okay. Passage is a two minute cooldown. When will it be back up? It'll be back up at around 2.30. So we see Passage, Umber Smash. Okay, that's cool. We need Passage for the second Earthquake. So if we see, okay, 2.49. Great, Passage is back up. We can use that. That's basically how we go around handling these buffs. We see that where's the most valuable spot to use them? What's the difference between, or the discrepancy between the, the abilities times? If they're less, then we look at it like say say we needed passage for the second tsunami for whatever reason we would determine which one has more value is passaging the ember smash more valuable or is passaging the second tsunami more valuable obviously you would never passage the second tsunami because it's just worthless but that's just an example and let's say another fight i think that's it for this video though Looking through, I don't really see anything. Faint, having faint for the uh, fiendish orbs, and then having faint for the first earthquake auto attacks is very, very comfy. Makes it so that the tank does not get autoed to death and does not get the earth debuff resolved because of it. So before we end the video, I'm gonna do one quick, one more quick rundown. So we have knocked Helios star for the first tsunami. We have knocked Helios for the, in reprisal for the first tsunami. We have Star to top us up after the Ember Smash. After the Ember Smash, we have Collective to top us up for the second tsunami. After the second tsunami, we have Star Pop to top us before this, the knockdown times two, the healer AoEs. After the healer AoEs, we have Indom to top us before the first earthquake. After the first earthquake, we have Collective and Star to top us off before the second earthquake. For the second earthquake, we do a buff uh, deploy plus shake plus veil to mitigate it to zero. After that, it's just Bows of Agony, Soul of Chaos. After Soul of Chaos, we do Sucker plus ET. To top us off before the boss comes back for the Blaze, Star pops before the second Blaze. And after the second Blaze, Collective is used to top us before the knockdown times four. So it's actually not that much healing, but again, the video is getting too long now. 27 minutes for a fucking six minute fight is unreal. But I appreciate all you guys do for me thank you guys for subbing if you haven't subbed already please sub leave a like leave a comment and i will see you guys later thank you guys for watching